One of my favorite Shakespeare plays is Much Ado About Nothing, where a lot of the comedy revolves around the relationship between Beatrice and Benedict, who both employ their razor-sharp wits to duel with one another in a game of brinkmanship that increasingly becomes acerbic and antagonistic as the play progresses. But their friends are convinced that they are made for one another, and so they conspire to turn their passion of antagonism into a passion of romance. Benedict's friends convince him that Beatrice is secretly in love with him. Beatrice's friends, for their part, do the same and convince Beatrice that Benedict is secretly pining for her. Although completely false, the consequence of these machinations is to ensure that Benedict and Beatrice fall madly in love, each convinced that they are merely responding to the desperate love of the other. Had they waited for one of them to make the first move, perhaps nothing would have happened between them. They would have passed one another by like two ships in the night, oblivious to the potential of love between them. In today's gospel, Jesus invites us to love one another as he has loved us. Now we often think of Jesus' love for us as being unconditional and this being the defining characteristic of God's love for us. But what if the defining characteristic of God's love for us is also the fact that God loves us first. God makes the first move and takes the initiative, takes the risk of loving us. In the play Much Ado About Nothing, it was a clever trick on the part of Beatrice and Benedict's friends that released, unleashed the potential of love and fulfillment between them. But in the real world, it doesn't happen that neatly. And often, one party has to take the risk of love and be the first to make the first move. But if we think about it, we don't really need a clever trick because we have something much better. We have Jesus who has loved us first and has invited us and taught us to love like him, to take the risk of being the first to love another person. Jesus says in the gospel today, I give you this commandment so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. One of the longest and most profound and extensive studies of adult human behavior was made on a group of sophomores from Harvard that started in the year 1938 and has lasted more than 80 years tracking these individuals through their life. And one of the key questions they have posed is what are the factors that influence and determine an individual person's happiness and fulfillment in life? The results have been startling because they have confirmed across numerous social strata that the overriding factor that determines a person's happiness and fulfillment is not the amount of wealth that they have amassed, neither is it the prestige of their career, but it is rather the relationships that they have. How intimate and how close are these relationships? Put more simply, what determines a person's happiness is how much they love others, how much they risk in love. There is a story told of a very poor man who was married to a woman who had lovely, beautiful, long hair. And his wife came to him one day and said, dear, please buy me a comb so that I can groom my hair. This man didn't know what to respond and was rather embarrassed as he showed his wife the broken strap of his watch and explained to her that not only did he not have money to buy her a comb, he couldn't afford to repair his watch that had just broken. His wife didn't insist. The next day as he passed by a shop, a pawn shop, he went in and sold his watch for a very low price and then went to the store and bought a comb for his wife. That evening as he presented the comb to his wife, he was shocked to find her shorn of her long braids with her hair all short and she in her turn produced a watch strap and said, dear, I sold my hair in order to buy this watch strap. And so rather than be bitter at the futility of their love, 
a comb for no hair, and a watch and a watch strap for no watch. They embraced each other, filled with tears at the depth of their love and self-sacrifice for one another. In last week's sermon, I talked about the foolishness of love. Too often, I think we hesitate to take the first move because we have so many calculations about how it can go wrong. Even if it does wrong, go wrong. Let's not care about that. Jesus invites us to take the risk of love, to take the risk of laying down our lives for others and making sacrifices for them, knowing that that's what counts the most. And that's what will bring his joy into us and into the world. So let's love as Jesus loves. God bless and have a good Sunday.